Now it's time to create our first HANA application. And to do that, we're going to use, in a first example, the web-based development workbench. So I'm just going to switch to my web browser in here and click on the editor option for us to create new apps. So in here you can see the packages that are already available in the installation. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new one, so the package for our application. So I'm just going to right click on content and there's an option new package. And I'm going to call this P1 e learning. I'm just going to create that. It will create one empty package, but this web-based development workbench have a set of wizards that we can access using the right click option and then go into create application. So here on create application, there's an option of an empty application. There are there are also other types of application, but we're going to create an empty one. Once we click on create, it will retrieve for us three files. One index.html, we're going to replace this by the content we already did in a previous unit, and two other files, the access app and the access access. If you access the content of the access app file, you will see that there's nothing inside it. That's because this file is just a flag, it's just a, a descriptor for the access engine. So the application layer of HANA will check the package in question, in this case the B1 e-learning package, and by the existence of this file, it will know that this is an application. So whenever somebody tries to access this uh, package using the access engine port, in this case the port 8000, for example, it will have access to the content of that folder. The other file, the .xs access file, is an authorization file. So in here you can set several parameters and attributes for us to specify what is the content or who have, have access to your app. The .xs access file is also a mandatory file, and this file is, we will specify that your app is exposed to be accessed from outside. The authentication method, how users going to authenticate in your application. There's also some other specifications and then you can check more details on the HANA security guide. Okay, so let's now import the HTML and JavaScript that we did in the previous unit. So let's just get both files. So I still got here the test.html and the JavaScript we did. What I'm gonna do, I will create a zip file with those two archive.zip and using the web-based development workbench we can import it by just right click on your package import archive and once you do that you just point to your archive.zip file and import it once this is done you will see here this is some trash from the Mac system. Let me just delete it. Well, once that is done, you will see your test.html and your JavaScript in the server right now. That means you can run your test.html, so just play it. And you will see your app is now hosted on HANA and working as the same as it was running locally. So now you got your XS app running on HANA. We can do the same steps or similar steps using the SAP HANA Studio. Uh, if you access your SAP HANA Studio and change your perspective to the development perspective, you will see right there these three tabs, the Project Explorer, Repository, and Systems. So System is the default tab, as we mentioned before, uh, it gets all the database artifacts and all the physical objects of your system. The repositories is where all the HANA packages, the applications that are deployed on HANA, are stored. So if you can open in there, you will see you got several repositories in there. The one that we just created using the web-based development workbench. And what we're going to do now is creating 
a new project in the project explorer. This tab shows all the content, all the files that are hosted locally. And that means every time we create something, we need to synchronize with the server by activating this component. So I would just create, right click on it, new, other, and search for XS projects. And there you find it inside SAP HANA application development. There is the access project. I will name this B1 Studio Project. And click on next. It will ask me for a repository workspace for me to host the artifacts in the HANA server. So I just get the default one. And also ask me if I want to create an access application access file and the descriptor file just like we did in the web-based development workbench. Once I click on finish, I got my project in there. And if you see, all the files got this golden icon on it, which means they are already synchronized with the repository. They're already in the server. Uh, I've just created a new index file here, a new HTML file, just for you guys to take a look. So just a sample file and a you create my HTML. Okay, so there goes our simple HTML page. I'm gonna save this. And once I save that, you will see that the icon here is gray, which means this object is not activated. Although you can find a, a representation of this object in the server. So if I check with the web-based web development workbench and refresh here, you will see that we got the B1 Studio project and we got the index in there, but this flag means this object is not activated. So if it, if I try to run it from there, it will show me, oh, sorry. Let's place the credentials. It will show me the object is not found. So it, which means this path is invalid. So every time you create or modify any artifacts on Honey Studio, you need to activate it. And to do that, you can click on this green button on top, activate a SAP HANA object, or right click on it, theme, and then there's the option activate it. Now, it has, it has this golden mark, which means it is inside the repository. So if I just refresh the page that was not found, you will see the object in there. So this is just an example of how we create an access project using both the SAP HANA web-based development workbench and the SAP HANA Studio. In the next exercises, we're going to stick with the web-based development workbench.